Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Michael Nix New Classic Banjo Project live stream concert. We're sponsored tonight by the Franklin, Massachusetts Public Library. Thank you, Franklin, Massachusetts Public Library, for bringing this concert uh, to everyone. Uh, we're recording here in my office in the Lava Center in uh, Greenfield, Massachusetts. You can go and download a program, if you'd like, from my website, michaelnixmusic.com, and look under the new Classic Banjo tab, and you'll find a PDF that you can download. I'll be reading the program notes, but if you'd like to have a copy, that's where you can find them. Um, if you have any questions or comments, there will be a Zoom question and answer period following the live stream concert. Email me at michaelnixmusic at gmail.com if you need the password. Some of you have it already. Uh, enjoy the concert. We'll start tonight with Coromanti. Uh, Coromanti is based on the music of a gathering or festival of the enslaved people in Jamaica in 1688, transcribed by a Mr. Baptiste for the British explorer Hans Sloan and published in the 1707 volume, A Voyage to the Islands. The word Coromanti refers to the Akan people from what we now know as Ghana. The transcription was originally written in three sections. I've used themes from each of the sections and added my own material uh, to make it parse well for modern ears. What I'll do is play the theme from the A section on a stylized reproduction gourd banjo um, so you can hear somewhat what it might have sounded like when the enslaved people were playing this. sounds a little bit different than the banjos that we're used to hearing uh, when you hear bluegrass or old-timey music. Those gourd banjos were tuned a fourth lower than the banjos that we know now. And I've added uh, bass strings to my instrument uh, to give me a lower range than our modern banjo has.
Monty. Overcome by Jim Dalton, one of the two pieces that I commissioned for this instrument for this year. Uh, the program notes by Jim. This year, 2019, marks the 100th anniversary of the birth of singer and activist Pete Seeger. Written on the head of Seeger's banjo was the phrase, this machine surrounds hate and forces it to surrender. Recent events have made this statement and the intent that it embodied even more meaningful to me. Michael Nix's offer of a commission to write a concert piece for banjo gave me an opportunity to commemorate this significant presence from my formative years as a musician and a person of conscience. Though I use some of the tunes connected with Seeger as source material, they are usually buried in the texture and counterpoint and not meant to be overt. The two movements use musical metaphors to express the ideas embodied in the movement titles. Paired with a form of the ancient technique of soggetto cavato, these give shape to the composition, though they are likely not obvious to the listener.
Overcome by Jim Dalton. Now a piece called Banjar Lamplern by myself. Um, while on tour in Thailand, I had occasion to travel to the northeastern provinces to the Isan region abutting the Mekong River near Laos. I fell in love with the raucous folk music known as Morlam played there. Typical instrumentation includes the cane, a free reed uh, mouth organ with two rows of bamboo pipes, uh, and the fin, a three-string guitar with an elaborate carved dragon headstock. Dragon's about that long and the guitar's about that long. So it's really quite wonderful. Modern players electrify their instruments and include bass and uh, uh, electric bass and drums in the ensemble. Uh, Lamplern is a mode or style of more lamb music characterized by virtuosic playing. The style often consists of three distinct um, sections of virtuosic virtuosic burst of solo cane music marked by rhythms that mimic quick breaths in and out, somewhat like a harmonica. Um, a slow, free ad-lib section in wandering meters and tempos, and a highly rhythmic section in duple meter uh, where the fin player develops and improvises on a traditional theme.
Enter our lamb plur. Now the second commissioned work from this season uh, is by Thomas Schuttenhelm. Uh, it's entitled Ken and Gale's Mystery Serenade. And uh, Thomas writes, Julian Hawthorne was an American writer and journalist and the son of novelist Nathaniel Hawthorne. In his story, Ken's Mystery from 1883, the protagonist Ken and Gale describes his encounter with a 200 year old woman Ethelind, who was awakened from her centuries of sleep by a song he played on his banjo. Shortly after Kenningale's serenade to Ethelind, he discovered that the banjo appeared to age 200 years. This song serenade is a reimagining of the mystery, music, and mutations that were acted upon Kenningale's strange banjo.
and Gail's Mystery Serenade. Spanish Fandango Variations. Uh, Spanish Fandango is neither Spanish nor Fandango. It shows up in various banjo and guitar tutors from about 1850 on. Uh, I've looked at three different sets of variations that I found in the Library of Congress uh, when I was researching older music for the banjo. And after looking at these, I decided that I would write my own set of variations in the 19th century style. Uh, when I was first exploring the timbres and textures and the different range of the banjar. So that's what's happening with this is, this is me exploring this instrument uh, very early on uh, as I was writing for it.
Fandango variations. Now, five sketches for um, five string banjo. I call these aperçu from the French, which means a survey or sketch as in an outline or an immediate impression, especially an insight. I write these aperçu as a way of introducing my ideas for a new classic banjo style to the five string banjo community. While most of my work has been for the extended range uh, seven string banjo uh, that I designed, I feel it's important to continue the tradition of the nylon five string finger style classic banjo and to bring the art form of this rich style of playing from the 19th century into the 21st century. Um, so five short movements. Uh, the first incorporates downstroke uh, uh, with uh, the upstroking. Um, the second, uh, well, a bunch of little etudes. I'll let you figure them out.
five bat pursuit or five string banjo. finish out tonight's program with a piece called Barton Cove. Um, three miles from my house is the site of a pivotal battle in King Philip's War of 1675 and 1676. On May 19th of uh, 1676, English settlers under Captain William Turner attacked and massacred nearly 400 multi-tribal natives, mostly women, children, and elderly. Regrouping with reinforcements, the Native Alliance rallied, killing Turner. Um, the war, which provided a blueprint for the removal of natives and the taking of their land, ended with uh, Chief Metacomet, that is King Philip, uh, as he had taken the English name. Philip was captured and shot to death on the spot. Barton Cove was composed after I attended a reconciliation ceremony between the select board of Turner's Falls, Massachusetts, and representatives of the Abenaki people on the shores of the Connecticut River at Barton Cove. Uh, in this piece, I'm co combining the idea of classical guitar arpeggios in a guitar tuning with the expressive banjo gesture, gestures and the use of the chanterelle or drone string, which, of course, guitarists get, don't get to use. So um, it's a, an interesting uh, hybrid texture of guitar banjo. Gestures.
thank you all for tuning in tonight. And I especially want to thank the Franklin Mass Public Library for sponsoring this concert and this uh, Zoom meeting to follow. Um, if you want to um, join the conversation and you don't have the password, email me at uh, michaelnixmusic at gmail.com. Um, check in on my website, uh, michaelnixmusic.com, and you can read about the new classic banjo project and about uh, the various instruments that I've used. Thank you all for tuning in and um, for letting me share my music with you, and good night.